protagonists find great power along their adventure, and it's quite necessary for them to blend in and appear normal in society by hiding their powers from other people around them. Of course, it won't stay that long like this because at some point their powers will be revealed to others and they will know just how overpowered that person really is. This video covers 10 overpowered anime protagonists who hide their powers. If you are new around here, then please make sure that you subscribe to the channel with the notification icon turned on to stay up to date with the latest anime news and recommendations right at your doorstep. Now, without giving y'all waiting, let us begin with the video. I'll be starting this list off with a fairly new anime show called The Ice Blade Sorcerer Shall Rule the World. This anime aired last season, and truth to be told, it was okay at best. The protagonist Ray White is the first commerce student to enter a very prestigious academy, and while he is surrounded in an environment filled with nobles, of course, the most obvious thing is that he will be made fun of. Though the thing is, no one realizes is that Ray White is in fact the legendary Ice Blade Sorcerer hero hiding in plain sight, and despite his legendary status, all he wishes is to live a peaceful school life which he could never achieve until now. <laughs> Tomodachi Game is up next, and this is possibly featuring one of the most intelligent protagonists in anime. With a high IQ so high, his decision making during the game makes him a threat to others. <laughs> This anime is basically called Friendship Game. A group of high school friends get abducted to play some games, and as they were in debt, they pretty much owe a lot of money. And that is why this game is set to make them go out of debt, but losing would be very costly to them. Essentially, the friends must put trust in each other as working together is key to victory. But what if one of them is actually a traitor, putting them all at risk and causing a sabotage? Even the protagonist himself may seem average, but the light in the tunnel is soon to be reached and will uncover his true capabilities within the game. <laughs> Getting reincarnated into another world as a prodigy or a child is a sign that he is overpowered. And yes, that is 100% always the case when it comes to an anime. This is called The Aristocrat's Otherworldly Adventures. Now, in the body of a young master and born, you know, into a very royal family and noble family, Master Kane is the protagonist and turns out to be over-leveled and overpowered thanks to the gods blessing him with strength beyond this world's capabilities. Even his entire family pretty much begged him to hide his powers in fear of something bad happening to him due to his stats being extremely too high, actually higher than normal. <laughs> He can take down giant tough monsters all on his own that even an A-rank party couldn't, which tells you he is, well, unbeatable. So yeah, it's extremely generic that you most likely have seen countless times in other anime, but at the very least, it is quite entertaining. <laughs> Witchcraft Works is a pretty underrated but a series that has greatly exceeded my expectations at being entertaining and gave me exactly what I needed. The most popular girl in the academy, tall and attractive, falls in love with a normie looking guy in which she was actually tasked at protecting him. And turns out that the guy is actually the key to unlocking a secret power and she is in fact a powerful witch hiding in plain sight at school awaiting to fight off danger that approaches. Other witches are even, you know, they happen to be after the boy in search for a great power as he must somehow and some way unlock that power himself. Now for a more classic recommendation, one of the most beloved isekai anime series from the good old days where Hiro and Demon Lord are both transported to the real world of Japan from their fantasy life. Ha 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 ha! 
俺はついに旗ヶ谷を支配した次はいよいよクリーンランドだ They both lost a lot of their powers and are forced to live a normal life in society, making money and also paying rent. Mao, the demon lord, works at McDonald's selling burgers, and Emiusa, well, the hero is an office lady. Truth is, it's not as peaceful as you'd think, since there, there are dangerous enemies that will soon make an entrance, and it's up to Mao and Emi to work together, enemies becoming allies. <laughs> Plunder is an interesting series with a very unique concept behind the amount of numbers you have on your body, which determines whether you will be sent to the dark abyss when it reaches zero. <laughs> Legendary warriors of the past with powerful abilities are said to exist, and a young girl who witnessed her mother get sent to the abyss was pretty much tasked with finding the hero, but this won't be easy at all. Well, it so turns out that the hero is a perverted protagonist wearing strange masks and going around doing etchy things to girls in disguise so he won't blow out his cover. But upon his reveal, the number on his body, well, it says it all. <laughs> The Asterisk War takes place in a prestigious academy where the protagonist only attends the school for the sole purpose of finding his missing sister. Now granted starts out pretty uninspiring when it's, you know, quite predictable with a duel happens, but it does rapidly get better over time. It's the most identical series to, let's say, Rakudai Kishi no Cavalry, and I believe that's why many actually decided to check it out in the first place, and it's exactly planned like Rakudai. A duel happens, the girl loses, and she becomes the partner of the guy to enter a tournament and fight for a championship in the academy. The setups are strange into train and fighting for these events, and let's not forget the addition of a harem. It's certainly not bad, but definitely not better than Rockadai. <laughs> Strike the Blood is one of my favorite anime series focusing on not only a very captivating and entertaining protagonist with a good story, but also it's genuinely a good harem series in the genre for many other series. The overall quality and animation separated this a lot from the others, and despite having its slow production, the show is actually fully complete, and you can binge watch the whole thing right now if you even want to. Akatsuki Kojo, the protagonist, may seem like an average guy, but he holds the powerful vampire powers of the seven primogenitor and he doesn't even realize that until later. For that reason, a secret organization send, sends out a shaman to watch over Kojo in case he decides to go evil and terrorize the city, but they both end up working together as a team to stop the other bad guys. Now to tell you this guy straight up, Hell's Paradise, if you didn't know, is actually Studio Mappa's most underrated shonen anime, and it's mostly, you know, it kind of mostly comes down to its production pipeline. <laughs> Hell's Paradise is essentially an interesting take on a battle royale type show where characters or criminals enter a dangerous island and must fight for an elixir, and only one can come out victorious with a pardon to avoid execution. Of course, the lack of animation quality and decision making to take on a project such as this is quite obvious, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad anime. It's solid, but definitely not their best work. <laughs> Yabang! Nisa! The final anime to recommend on this list is a show called Campione, with a badass and powerful god slayer named Godo, who is the king at getting girls to fall in love with him. Yeah. Godo 
first goes to Italy to return a tablet at, a, at his father's will, and ended up in a battle which he won and got the title of Campione, and is now a certified God Slayer. Because of this, he attracted a bunch of women who were interested in fighting by his side to protect humanity as he tackles dueling deities in a conflict between heaven and earth. All in all, honestly, it's a pretty damn good anime. One of the more entertaining harem series with a protagonist you will enjoy so much. <laughs> You, my friends, just made it to the end of the video and witnessed 10 overpowered anime protagonists who hide their powers. If I have managed to leave any anime out in particular that you thought would be a great show on the list, then please let me know in the comment section down below as I'd love to hear your very opinion, or just comment down below what you thought about the video in general as I'd always appreciate feedback. Enjoy the rest of the day, and I'll be seeing you all in the next one.